Amen. Hallelujah. Great occasion. I love it. You know, Dave, this is very exciting for actually for the both of us because uh, we have some uh, things that are really special to pastors and nobody else, particularly when we're ordained as a pastor. You know, uh, one of the special things is it's a comment that pastors can say uh, while they're preaching, and the comment is, in conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> and that means you can speak another half hour because they, you just warned them. So, <laughs> so I thought I would start out by saying, in conclusion, because <laughs> I'm not going to be here for half an hour. <laughs> I thought maybe I would uh, talk just a little bit about prayer and what prayer means to me. Because prayer is such a very important part of my life and it just seems like the older I get and the more I do um, it just uh, keeps growing and growing my prayer life is uh, it grows and I want to tell you a little bit about what I do uh, in my prayer life I actually my prayer life starts in the evening when I go to bed and that's when I start praying and of course, you know, and, and I don't know if you have the problem, but when I pray, I'll be praying to God, and all of a sudden, I'll remember, oh my gosh, I didn't call Adele to get her that form I had to have over to the university. And I, excuse me, dear Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. But I have a wandering mind. I, I just, I can't do that. But it, it happens to me all the time. So I figured this out for myself. I go to bed and I spend about five minutes and I kind of like I empty my mind. I try to remember all those things I didn't do and I'm planning for tomorrow and I go, okay, Lord, I think I'm done now. Okay, now I can go to prayer. And I start praying to the Lord. I thank him for everything that he has done for me and I pray for friends and I, you know, I have this uh, formula. I call it the one to ten formula. What I do is I thank God ten times for ten things, and then I only ask Him for one thing. And I remember early in my life when I would pray, I would ask and ask and ask and ask, and oh, by the way, thank you, dear Lord. And that was my prayer life. But when I changed my prayer life and thank God for just everything in my life, it's amazing how He began to just absolutely bless me. I'm really beyond belief. Hallelujah. He is, God is so good. And in my job and in my personal life, it's just uh, exciting that we can come to God in our prayer and we don't have to offer a, uh, a, a um, oh, what do they call it, a, when they used to do in the Old Testament, they had to do an offering, they had to do a burnt offering. We don't have to burn anything. We don't have to sacrifice. It's just like, man, we can just start talking to God immediately. Which is so nice, you know. Thank you, dear Lord, for that, for that gift that He gave the um, apostles and the disciples, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's just it's just so exciting what you can do and what He'll do for you. But I want to just share with you just one little thing, um, particularly being with uh, Mission Aviation Fellowship. You know, the pilots depend on prayer and about nothing else. Because I was with MAF when there was no such thing as uh, GPS. The pilots, when they flew, had to fly from one mountain range over this river and over this hill and down another mountain range, and then they would land. And they had to do visual uh, by flying. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, we would lose a pilot in a plane because maybe the uh, fog came in or a cloud cover came in because there's no... Um, weather reports in the middle of Africa uh, for missionary pilots and the pilot would turn around and come back and oh my goodness he was locked in again with clouds and he had a hard time finding his way back to the base but thanks to uh, GPS which can guide him through fog or anything uh, I, we would went, went for uh, five years I think without it without an accident which was just amazing so thank you, dear Lord, for GPS. But it was prayer that kept those pilots. And those pilots had such absolutely phenomenal uh, stories to tell about how they got lost and, and how God opened up the clouds for them. And they just actually came right through the clouds into uh, a runway where they didn't even know it existed. They've been flying that area for 10 years. It's just amazing how, how God would do that. And, and I kind of relate. To my life, uh, God brings me through the clouds every once in a while when I'm kind of lost. He, you know, he, he actually pulls me down. Come on down here, Larry. You know, and and, and this is where you need to land. Uh, but I wanted to share a, a story with you. It's um, 
when I would um, go out and call on people, I would just ask the Lord to be with me and, and take me to the people. And I remember one incident where um, I had uh, looked over the records and there was one gentleman who lived in um, Upland, California and he was donating uh, $3,000 to uh, MAF on an annual basis. And uh, But nobody ever called on him or thanked him for years. I looked at his little uh, activity card. And so I usually would not call on somebody that was um, donating $3,000. My job was actually to call on the larger donors, and we had another department doing that. But I thought, well, you know, I'm going to L.A., and he lives in Upland. I'm just going to call him and see if I can stop by. So I call him and ask him if I could stop by and see him. He said, sure, why don't you stop by and see me? And then uh, uh, prior to that, I went to a meeting in um, San Diego of all of the fundraisers. And I was sitting at a table at having lunch and just listening to the fundraisers tell their stories. And these two guys sitting next to me, they would say, well, you know, wh whatever you do, don't waste your time going to the Christian Businessmen's Association because they never give you any money. And the other guy said, yeah, I've been there three times and they never make a donation, so I just don't go there anymore. So, of course, I write on my computer, don't go to the Businessmen's Fellowship Group. So, anyway, getting back, um, I called Russ and he invited me over and we had a good talk. And as I was getting ready to leave, he walked out to the car with me and I sat down in the car and he kind of leaned. Larry says, by the way, I belong to a group. Can you come and speak in a couple weeks? They'd love to hear about MAF. And I said, sure, I'd be glad to. And just before I drove away, I said, oh, by the way, Russ, what's the name of the group? It's a Christian Businessmen Association. <laughs> Larry, you idiot. <laughs> Why didn't you find out before you committed? <laughs> so I said, sure, Al. But I, I didn't worry because he told me to be there at 6 o'clock. And you know there are no fundraisers driving down the freeway at 6 o'clock in the morning because I know I could sneak in and they wouldn't see me. <laughs> Went to the restaurant, met him at Euclid, and, uh, uh, Euclid down in Upland and uh, met him there and at the restaurant, we went and sat down, and we had a nice breakfast. Then he let me put my brochures in the back of the room. And uh, they introduced me, and uh, as I got up to stand up, he, he pulls my coat. He says, Larry, Larry, Larry says, don't ask for a donation. I go, okay, Russ, that's my job. But anyway, I uh, told the group about MAF. I was very excited about it, and we had a good time. I talked to a few pilots that were there at the meeting, and we walked out of the restaurant, and, uh, and here, here again, he walks me to my car. I get in my car, and he says, oh, Larry, by the way, by the way, Larry, hold on just a second. He says, here, here, I have something for you. And it was a check, and it was folded in two like that. And he says, here, I want you to have that. And I said, well, thank you so much, Russ. I really appreciate it. And I've always learned that, particularly in fundraising, when anybody gives you money or a check, you always open it up, and you look at it, and you say, thank you very much, and then go on. Well, I opened the check up, and I said, oh, thank you very much, Russ. And he took off down the sidewalk. And I looked at that check, and I go, oh, my gosh. Oh my goodness, it was $10,000. No. Oh <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And my <laughs> it's amazing how God just began to bless me in, in all aspects of my job and just representing him and the MAF. It was really a great time. But I want, I want to tell you something else. Uh, actually, what I want to do is read uh, Matthew 7-7 seven, seven for you. Matthew 7, 7, it states, keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep searching, and you will find it. Keep knocking on the door, and it will open for you. For everyone who keeps asking will receive, and the person who keeps searching will find. And the ones who keep knocking, the doors will open. And so my message is, whatever you do, don't ever give up on prayer. And uh, I want to share another little story with you. Uh, we had a, a church back in the eastern part of the country that we they were building a new building across the street from their old church. And of course, Dave, you know that you have to go through all the rigmarole with the city and the codes and the building department. And they had the church just totally built. And uh, let me explain to you, there was a block wall down this side of the church property and a block wall across the back and there were houses there and then over on this side was actually like a gigantic mountain and the church owned that property and they got that mountain they got the church totally built final inspector comes in inspection comes in and they say to the pastor something's happened here you you're missing seven trees you need seven more trees in your parking lot and 
So anyway, that was the, the group that ran the park and recreation. They, they were in charge of the trees. Anyway, so they had to give up some of their parking places and put in seven trees and change the bushing around. The inspector came back for their final, and the inspector says, well, you're missing seven parking places. And the pastor says, I know, because you guys took them away from me because we had to put in more trees. And the inspector said, that doesn't make any difference. You've got to have seven more parking places for your building. And the, and the pastor said, well, we'll just go ahead and use some on the street. And, 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 and the inspector said, no, we've already included the street parking. You can't park anymore on the street. And so I can't give you final until you get seven more parking places. The pastor was in a dilemma. There is no room to build seven more parking places. The building is built. The, all the curbs, got, everything is in. And so the pastor went to the congregation. He said to the congregation, we, we have some good news and bad news. The church is ready for us to move in. But the bad news is we need seven more parking places. And he says, for the life of me, I, 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 he says, all we can do is put the parking places where that mountain is. But he says, we have spent every single penny of our construction funds. We do not have any money to move that mountain for parking places. So he said, what we're going to do is we're going to pray to God that he'll move the mountain. Amen. 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 <laughs> but he said, I heard some people in the back snickering. <laughs> He's like, God's going to move that mountain? So he said, for the first week, he preached his sermon, told everybody, pray for the mountain. Second week goes by, third week, fourth week goes by. He said, lo and behold, on the fifth week, he said, a gentleman came into my office. And he was from the phone company. And he said to me, you know, we are building a large four-story building down the street. And he says, we've run into a major problem that we didn't discover until right now is that we cannot compact the dirt where we are at now to build our building. And we found that that mountain you have is the only dirt within miles that we could use. And we'd like to buy your mountain. <laughs> and he said to the pastor, we'll pay you 150000 for the mountain. And the pastor says, well, that's wonderful, but he said, um, maybe how about if you level it and extend our parking lot for us, we could cut a deal. And the guy from the phone company, while the hesitation, said, yeah, we'll do that for you. We'll give you, get rid of the dirt and we'll give you a parking place. Thank you, dear Lord. The church has been able to open up. See, God can move mountains. And you know, <laughs> he, he moves them in a way that we just, we do not understand at all. Isn't that neat? Okay. Well, anyway, um, I told you about my prayer life. Um, uh, I want to say something here. Let's see. Uh, I, want, I wanted to tell you about Job. I think Job is uh, an exciting story because you know what Job went through. Uh, God took everything away from Job. And uh, all he had was prayer and left in his whole life. And he, Job would go up on a hill because he had lost his family, his farms, his houses. God took everything away from him. Of course, that was uh, God and the devil working together on one of Satan's programs. And so uh, even Job's friends would come, and they wouldn't even know what to say to him. So they said, so they just sat next to Job on this mountain. And, and that's all they did. They just, they didn't pray. They just sat there being with Job to... Uh, help him. But anyway, as, you, as, the, as the program goes, jo, uh, God restored everything to Job in double, triple, quadruple what Job ever had because of Job's faithfulness. Job could have cursed God. Job, Job could have left God, but he didn't. He said, I will stay with you to the end no matter what happens. And so God blessed him. And you know, God does that to us too. If we, if we can just stay with God to the end, it's amazing what God will have for us. Amen. I like to um, tell you that all we need to do is trust in God. Sometimes our prayers will not be answered if there is wrongdoing in our hearts. Our Holy Spirit is not able to answer our prayers if we are disobedient to God. But when we are obedient to God, then He will answer our prayers and He will give us everything that He allows us to have. I want to conclude with one other story. Um, I was in uh, Sacramento and I was supposed to meet a gentleman at the Sacramento Air Force Base and the Army, was, uh, the Air Force was closing the base down and they're open up to private people. And I was supposed to meet a gentleman that was starting a corporate jet company out of the Sacramento airport. And I drove in where the guard was and I told him who I was and who I wanted to see. And the guard says, I'm sorry, this is still military, but you have to come back next week because it will not be a military base and you can just drive right in. So I said, okay. So I don't know why, but I drove back and I parked around right in front 
where the inspection station is where you have to go in and get your uh, insurance approved before you go in. So I just parked my car and I, I got out of the car and I stood on the curb. And I'm just, I'm watching this guy turning everybody around. Everybody wants to get to the base, but it's, you've got like a week to go and he could turn around. And I'm standing there and this fellow pulled up in a Suburban right in front of me. And uh, I just said, hello, how are you? And he says, fine. I said, hey, my, my daughter just got a Suburban. Those are such really nice cars. It's for the whole family, loads of dogs, the kids. It's incredible what she can carry that thing. He says, yeah, my wife loves this thing too. And as we're talking, I just kind of move over and I see there's a sign on the side of the car that says, JB Aviation. <laughs> That's the guy I'm supposed to see. And he drives, <laughs> God just told me to stand there at the curb, wait for him to show up. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I talked to him about five minutes, gave him a brochure. I said, you know, this, he had never heard of us. He said, well, okay, I'll think about it. The next week, uh, he sent a check in the office for $2,500 as a donation. And then the next week, I called him and thanked him for it. And then uh, two weeks later, he sends another check for $2,500. So I went over to Max, our president, and I said, Max, this guy keeps sending, every time I call him, he sends $2,500. Max says, go back and call him again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, it's, it's so much fun serving God. God is so good. I, I, he will do things for you that are just it, it, out of your mind. He'll blow your mind. And I uh, uh, just love the Lord so much. And I just appreciate this. So I, I am so excited about being a part of the organization, about World for Jesus, and uh, being here with Dave. I think it's just so exciting. Being with Dave is very exciting. And uh, I just appreciate you all, and I want to thank you so much. Thank you.